Hey, it's Katrin Weston, your pre-calculus teacher, and we're going to talk about 2.7, the complex zeros. So on page 179 in your textbook, there's a theorem, and it says that in the complex number system, the solutions of the quadratic equation, which is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a is not equal to 0, are given by this formula. Have you seen this formula before? Yes, it's the quadratic formula. That's why this is um, not really too new, only now instead of being in the real world, we're in the complex world where we can include solutions to the quadratic equation that might be complex, meaning that they have an imaginary number involved. Um, this means in the pink, if you can see, in the complex number system, a quadratic equation will either have one solution if the discriminant is zero, or two solutions, either two real solutions or two um, complex solutions. So we're going to take a look at that right now. So the second part of this lesson is to determine the, the character of solutions of a quadratic by looking at the, what is it? You guessed it, the discriminant. So in part one right here, what do we have here? We have, oops, it's invisible, standby. So in part one, Oops, it's stem. Uh. <laughs> Discriminant layer. Okay, so on page 180 in your text, you can see that in the little yellow box, there's a character of solutions. And what are we looking at? Yes, we're looking at the discriminant. So if the equation has two unequal solutions, you guys already know what the nature of the discriminant is, right? So this is the first thing. What is the discriminant? The discriminant is going to be b squared minus 4ac. That's going to be greater than zero. Okay? So we know this. We have two unequal real solutions. What's the case when the equ equation has a repeated real solution, meaning a double root? And if you guessed b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, you've got it. I just wrote down a quick example of a repeated um, root. That's when you have like a perfect square and you were to factor that x plus 1 quantity squared equaling 0, meaning your one solution is x equals negative 1, and the vertex of that quadratic is just going to be sitting on the um, x-axis. And the last case now, now we can say rather than no solution if the discriminant is, you guessed it, b squared minus 4ac will be less than 0. We're going to say rather than no real solution, we're going to say it has two complex solutions. And more specifically, if we have the two complex solutions, then they're going to be conjugates of one another. A conjugate in a con with a complex number, if I have, for instance, 2 plus 3i, the conjugate is going to be 2 minus 3i. So it's just changing this sign in the middle. You're not negating the 2. It stays the same. You're just changing this one. And you'll see that comes from that idea of in the quadratic formula when you have x equals plus or minus or negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, this plus or minus here has to do with this conjugate because you're going to get an imaginary part right here and you're going to have a plus positive part and a negative part. Okay, so I just wanted to show you a little bit about that. 
I'm going to turn. 20 is asking us to, with all of these, they want us to find the complex zeros of each quadratic function and then graph each function and label the intercepts. So if we were to do that, um, the first thing is we need to solve this. And you would do this with any quadratic, even if it wasn't, um, even if it didn't have complex zeros, okay? So um, we could look at the character of this just by finding the discriminant, but since we're going to graph it, we're going to need, and we, we do need to find the complex zeros. So um, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, x equals, you guys know what a, b, and c are, minus 6 plus or minus square roots. Then we've got 6 squared minus 4, 3, 4, all over 2, 3. Hey! Well, that was really exciting, wasn't it? So if we clean this up, we get negative 6 is plus or minus um, the square root of negative 12. And instead of negative 12, I'm going to write it as negative 1 times 4 times 3. If you clean this up, you'll see that it's negative 12. You can check, but that's what it is all over 6. So we have talked about the idea that the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. This was in that first video that I want you to watch before, so if you didn't do that, go back to that video and then come back to this. So now we have negative 6 plus or minus um, i is is equal to the square root of negative 1. The square root of 4 is 2. We don't know the square root of 3, so we're going to say 2 rad 3 i. And then both of these, I'm going to break this 6 up. It's this and this. Um, when we're thinking about complex numbers, it's nice to keep the real part um, separate and the imaginary part separate and the plus or minus in between. So notice that how I said we have conjugates, complex conjugates, because of that plus or minus. So my solution would be negative 1 plus or minus um, the square root of 3 over uh, 3i. So that is the solution, but we know that this parabola, if I were to graph it, is not going to cross the x-axis. Now you can ask yourself, is this smiling or frowning? What can we say? A is positive, so we can say it's a smile, right? Um, I also know what the y-intercept is, right? That's 4 because f of 0 is 4, so I already have some good points on this graph. Um, I could find the vertex quickly by going x equals negative 6 over 2 times 3. Hey, that's convenient. What's the vertex? It's located at negative, looks like negative 1, right? So I'm going to try to graph this, and hopefully it won't be too, too ugly um, on this line. Excuse my lack of straight lines. And I think we'll get enough here we go. Let's change the color, shall we? So we'll call that red. So 0, 4, we said 1, 2, 3, 4 is a point. Um, negative 1, how do I find the y part? f of negative 1. What is f of negative 1, everybody? Well, plug it in. It's, and I want you to show this on your exam, a little bit of work, negative 1 squared, even if it's a scribble like mine, plus 6 times negative 1 um, plus 4. So that's um, 3 minus 6, that's negative 3, plus 4 is 1. So this goes negative 1, 1 is our vertex, so here we are. And then what's the point? This is the axis of symmetry, right? So this is all, as you can see, 2.7 is going to be good practice for you for just graphing um, these quadratic functions. So this is x equals negative 1. I like you to label that. I want you to label your vertex, which is negative 1, 1. I want you to label the y-intercept, which is 0, 4. I want you to label a point that mirrors that. That's right here. What would that be if I'm going one unit to the right of negative 1? One unit to the left would put me at negative 2, 4, right? And then you connect the dots, make it nice and pretty, draw your arrows. Hey, that's not bad for my first graph on this, right? What do you think?
not so bad. Okay, so is that clear with everybody on um, this type of function? All of them you use the quadratic formula to find um, the zeros of the quadratic and then you graph it. Sometimes your zeros are real zeros, in which case you're just crossing the x-axis, which is totally okay. So let's move on to another example and I'm gonna add okay so here we go so with this um, I want to do I think number 12 is good so number 12 is f of x equals x squared um, plus 25 it says that you can um, you want to find the complex zeros. Well, we can find the complex zeros. We can use the quadratic formula, like I said, but we can use the square root method now in this case, now that we're um, up to speed and we understand complex solutions. So if I subtract 25 from both sides, like this, because notice I'm missing that linear term, x squared is equal to um, negative 25. All right, take the square root of both sides and I get that x, if I clean this up, is equal to plus or minus 5, because that's the square root of 25, i, because that's the negative 1. Notice, once again, they're always in pairs, um, positive 5i and negative 5i. That's the solution to this quadratic equation, okay? If I were to graph that, you can graph that thinking about transformations. This is the original function is x squared. It shifted up 25 units. So I'm just going to draw a rough sketch. 0, 25 is my y-intercept. It actually happens to be the vertex. It's going up this way, right? Okay, so that's another example. It's okay in this section if you get real zeros. So, um, for instance, if you did, let's see, um, number, number 10, for instance. Number 10 is f of x equals x squared minus 9. If we first start with a graph of this, it's still a smiling parabola, right? But the y-intercept is at 0, negative 9. If you were to plug this in to the quadratic formula, you would get plus or minus 3 as your solution. Your discriminant would be positive. And I'm going to use the square root method because that's the easier way to do it. x squared equals 9 and x is equal to plus or minus 3. I do want you to label these intercepts if they are, in fact, um, if they exist. And this is 3, 0. All right. So that concludes the lesson for 2.7. You also have three examples in 2.7 section that are very helpful, and I highly recommend that you go and read through them. And this should help you finish this assignment. It's due on Wednesday the 8th, the day of the exam. But get started on it so you can ask me questions on Monday, please. Okay. Bye.